I've removed all the old electrolytic capacitors and now I'm going to be restuffing them. It turns out that at least one of them isn't quite so old though. That's this guy. I could tell it's a replacement from the way it was soldered in. Here's the old connections and there are remains of a capacitor lug underneath those wires. So what I think the repairman did is he just cut off the lugs from the original electrolytic capacitor and then he soldered them onto the replacement with a big glob of solder. So all I had to do is heat up the, the lug there and these just slid right off. And these twist lock tabs, only one of them was actually soldered on. So I was <laughs> happy to find that that came out fairly easily. Now this guy definitely needs to go. See that crud oozing out and it's kind of bulging there. So that's why you really want to replace these old electrolytics. Even though the set may seem to be working okay, this guy was definitely going to really blow at some point. And this guy that's wrapped in cardboard, that was done for safety. It turns out the that cap is this guy right here. So it's coming right off the AC plug through this resistor and all the AC power that goes to the voltage doubler goes right through that cap. So both sides of it are a pretty high AC potential. Whereas the other cans, the negative, which is the outside of the can, is grounded. So this guy, it's... Uh, relatively safe to touch, reminding that, remind, remember that the whole chassis is actually hot, but assuming the neutral side was connected to the chassis, it would be okay to touch this cap, but no matter how you plug it in, it would not be a good idea to touch the bare metal on this guy. So my plan on these two guys is to uncrimp the seam here, pull out the metal ring, pull out the insides, and stick the new caps inside. One cap in this guy, three caps in this guy. This one, because it's covered in cardboard, I'm going to heat it up so that the cardboard uh, is loosened and I can slide it off. Then I'm just going to cut it, put a new cap in, glue it, and then slide the cover back over. Uncrimping the seam is a, is a bit of work, and since this will be under a cardboard tube anyways, why not take the quick and dirty approach? There's usually a glob of tar at the base here and uh, you need to heat that up to get these out. This outer sleeve is actually a little bit loose but this cap uh, is pretty well stuck on the end. Now as far as these two guys, I could just put the new cap in. For example this guy is going to go here, but it's much bigger than that clamp and it's just going to flop around. So I could wrap some layers of like uh, cardboard or something to just build up the diameter so it fits snugly in there, or I can take the old cap and uh, cut it stuff this inside. Really I just want to make sure that they're mounted securely in this clamp so the, the uh, connections don't come loose. Same on this guy. I haven't done too many of these. I've, uh, I've never been able to do it without mangling it because these are cardboard covers and if you try to kind of unroll the ends the, the cardboard starts to fall apart. And in fact on both of these it already is. So my thought was maybe to just cut it with a, a fine thin uh, like hacksaw blade, just cut them right in half, pull out the insides, put the new cap inside and glue it back together and then when you put it inside that clamp I don't think the, uh, the cut will be too noticeable. Or maybe I'll cut it closer to one end so where the clamp fits on it will be have more uh, structural integrity. I've been asked several times in the past how you get these seams opened up well, I don't have any magic trick. Uh, it's, it's not that easy to do on some cans. What I start out with is a pocket knife and just try to get a little bit going. Just the tip of the blade slide it under there. And then I'll switch to a small flat bladed screwdriver. Once you can get these started, it's generally not so bad and you can kind of just walk the screwdriver around, twist it, move it over, twist, move it over, and so on. Sometimes neither one of these will really get it going. And then I, res um, I resort to these, which are small needle nose pliers with a serrated edge on them. And I kind of just put it on here and squeeze and pry it over. That will always work, but it'll damage the outer edge of it. After the fact, you can kind of file it down or fill it in and make it not look so bad, but this definitely will gouge up the side. So I will 
try these and see how it goes. Okay, I think this one won't be too bad. What I did was I took this pocket knife blade and just carefully went back and forth. This is aluminum and it's a lot softer than this hardened steel, so I was able to kind of carve and, and, and dig under that edge, that lip there. Then I took my screwdriver and put it in there and twisted it to kind of start opening up that seam. Now that I've got it going, I, I can start walking it around clockwise and open up the whole thing hopefully. Let's see if I can get a little bit of this action on frame here. So, screwdriver in the seam and twist and, and move along. So there's actually a steel ring underneath that aluminum seam. So once you get the screwdriver in between that steel ring and the aluminum, you can just keep working along and opening it up. So aluminum is pretty malleable, so don't worry about mangling it too much because you'll be able to mash it all back down and make it look nice. The tricky part is always when you hit these lugs because it may kind of block your screwdriver from getting in there. So sometimes I work back, switch to another side. Both sides are getting a little bit sticky now, but there we go. So it really doesn't take that long. Usually about 10 minutes I can pop one of these open. Just be careful that you don't uh, slip and <laughs> jab this right into you, the flesh of your hand there. Very, very painful. So you might want to wear some type of leather glove or some type of shield there while you're doing this. Okay, I finished uncrimping the can. Now it's a matter of lifting out this twist lock ring. On this can there's actually a foil tab that's welded on and that's the ground connection going to the inside of the capacitor so that needs to get broken off. There, it's just a little bit of foil so it snaps right off. Now to get the insides out it'd be nice if you could just shake and they'd slide out but oh no it's not that easy. This will have to be heated with a heat gun and uh, it'll slowly start to expand the end will slowly lift up. I'll try to get that on frame but I'm not going to promise anything. <laughs> it's a little dangerous to be working with a heat gun and have a camera going and all that but we'll see. I ended up heating it up off camera, sorry. But the uh, as you heat it, what will happen is this cap will start to slowly bulge out as the insides heat up. And then you need to pull out the insides. See all that nice hot tar that got all gooey when I heated it up? That's what holds the cap inside. There's a big glop of tar at the far end. And once that gets hot enough, the insides just pop right out. I just clip off these leads and dispose of all that goo. And then you're left with this base. I'll clean that up a bit once it cools down. Then it's simply a matter of drilling two holes. One right near that tab to feed the positive capacitor lead through. And one near the edge for the negative lead. Or in this case, when there's a multi-section cap that's uh, where they don't use the other holes there, I'll just feed the negative lead through one of those. I heated up that cardboard cover and it slid right off and I cut open the can, got the insides out, and then I was pleasantly surprised that it was quite easy to roll open the seam on one end of these cardboard tubular caps and slide the insides out. Same on this one. I just cut this one open and the insides are very similar to the larger caps where it's a jelly roll of foil, an insulator, and the electrolytes plugged up with tar. I'll drill a small hole at either end and then I can put the new cap inside, slide the cardboard back over, re-roll the seam, maybe use a little bit of glue on it, and then uh, reinstall it. 
Okay, I have cleaned these all out with some multi-purpose uh, 409 type cleaner, degreaser. So about all that's left in these is just the tar. If you want, you could use something like lacquer thinner and dissolve all that out, but it takes a lot of lacquer thinner and you end up with all this sludge left over, so uh, lately I've just been leaving it in there. It's hardened. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to hurt anything. So what's left is to drill some holes in the bottom here to wrap the leads around. Out the caps, put these back on, recrimp it, and so on. And to keep track of which one goes where, this is the single section that goes here, and this is the multi section that goes there. And then there's these guys. But I will save that for tomorrow because it's getting kind of late. That's all for now.